Um, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce Alana Sims. Um, and I'll talk a bit about her uh, in a moment. But what I want to do right now is uh, maybe just give a bit of background of my, my own situation. Uh, as some of you know, uh, I did receive a lung transplant in 2016. I was one of the oldest, if not the oldest, in BC to receive a double lung transplant. I was just shy of 70. And uh, although I was diagnosed in 2008 uh, with a lung function of 15% even then, uh, it wasn't until 2012 that I knew of any programs that existed uh, to help people with lung issues and breathing problems. Um, I visited a doctor, but all I got was uh, puffers. And I, for that very reason, well, then in 2012, I happened to meet um, what I consider to be my first advocate. Her name is Jane Burns, and she's also a physiotherapist, much like Alana. And so because of that, she, uh, because of meeting her, she uh, introduced me to the pulmonary rehab program and all the resources that are associated with it. And also introduced me to my second advocate, which is Dr. Don Sin, who's a respirologist at St. Paul's Hospital. So with those two, I saw a glimmer of light for the first time uh, in terms of uh, moving forward. Um, and so for that, I'm very, very appreciative of the role of uh, physiotherapists and the role of exercise in, in maintaining uh, or improving health with regards to respiratory, those with respiratory issues. Um, because of my experience in the first four years of not receiving and not knowing and not being educated in terms of the kinds of resources that are available, I became an advocate because I didn't want anybody else that's diagnosed with COPD or uh, IPF or cystic fibrosis not to be able to know the kinds of resources that are available to them. Um, so I became uh, what I guess, I guess an advocate. Um, pulmonary rehab program was very important to me at the early stages prior to um, uh, my lung transplant. I attended the pulmonary rehab program. It was an eight week program. And uh, I learned a lot because it was an hour of exercise and an hour of education, uh, three times a week for eight weeks, and uh, also a, a very strong support system. Now with COVID, we don't have that kind of same uh, opportunity to meet face-to-face -face in a group, but we do it by Zoom. And uh, for the last few years, St. Paul's has asked me to be a guest speaker at their uh, pulmonary rehab sessions. So I provide a patient perspective to these people because often they're just newly diagnosed. And um, as mentioned before, I, I'm involved in the Better Breathers support group, online support group. Uh, so people can answer questions, ask questions and people can respond in terms of their experience. So it's a self-help, self-support group. And there's 470 members now uh, throughout BC and, and elsewhere. Also, um, we did start up uh, because I got a lung transplant. Um, I realized the the um, the intense uh, uh, need for uh, uh, visiting the hospital after the transplant. You have to stay for three months in Vancouver. So if you're from out of town, it's a great expense. So we we started up LT House BC lung transplant house PC. And within six months, we've funded our first uh, recipient. And we've now developed a protocol uh, in which patients are streamed to us. And they start off by being referred to by uh, the uh, social workers at uh, Vancouver General Hospital who do the lung transplants. So based on their referral and the referral of PC Lung Transplant or PC Lung Association, we come into play for those people that need financial assistance. So I'm very proud of that particular program. Um, already within, as I said, within six months, we funded our first patients. We have, uh, oh, if you visit the, the webpage, LT House PC, we have um, 
uh, a number of patients, even up to 12, I think 10 or 12 stories that are written by people that have had transplants from out of town and the costs associated with it, uh, the hardships they had. So those are the people that we're trying to help. Um, also, um, we and with that group, we have about, I think, 96 at this point, 96 contributors. These are all lung transplant recipients and, uh, and also uh, caregivers that have contributed to fund this program. So it's been uh, up to this point, very internal. It's not been made public outside of the uh, people that are associated with the program, but we hope to do it um, in the next month, uh, go public. Um, now, when COVID came, a lot of things happened. I used to belong to an exercise program um, similar to the ones Alana uh, is involved in. And uh, with COVID, those things canceled. So at the beginning of COVID, I decided that I needed, I needed exercise and not only the Zoom exercise programs, but I needed a social element. So I, I asked for some volunteers to help me walk, um, to, to walk with me. Uh, and I've had four since March, uh, continuously. So four times a week, I go out walking with a volunteer. And um, I consider this a, a very important ele element to my good health. So I'm, I'm initiating, um, and we're going to start with Vernon as an example, uh, using it as a template, and North Vancouver, and we may be having another area, um, to initiate a poem called Step Forward. Step forward is asking volunteers that might help somebody else uh, uh, by walking with them that would otherwise maybe have trouble uh, going out on their own and not feeling safe. Um, so we're going to be initiating that program. Anyways, without further ado, I, I just want to say how important physiotherapy was in my whole journey. And so with this, I'm very thankful and honored to introduce Anna, uh, Alana Sims. Alana has been very active in the Better Breathers group. She's posted a number of, uh, well, uh, week-long sessions on uh, exercise uh, via Zoom and uh, even got her family involved. I'm so appreciative of it, appreciative. Um, she holds a master's degree in rehabilitation uh, and uh, has more than 10 years experience as a pulmonary rehab in the pulmonary rehab program at Vernon Jubilee Hospital. And she also leads the North Okanagan chapter of the Better Breathers Group. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Alana and thank you for being here. Thank you. Hello, thank you uh, BC Lung for inviting me to speak today and to Dennis. Uh, for his tireless work on behalf of people with COPD and, and different lung conditions. Uh, it's great to have uh, patient advocates uh, like Dennis. I would like to start out today. Uh, our goal is to do a 30 minute seated exercise session today. Uh, I would like to start out today uh, by just reviewing a few things that I feel are essential for us to be safe during the activity program. So I'd like to share a little bit of a PowerPoint to start out uh, and then um, we'll go into our exercise program and then have some time for questions uh, at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay. So today we're going to talk about staying active. Um, they've, we've said at home. At home could also just mean in your uh, in your home community. S things that I feel are important to review before we move together um, is why why we might move. Uh, how to judge your effort. Uh, I'll introduce you um, or help you review. The perceived exertion scale. Uh, everybody's coming to the to this session today with maybe a different um, amount of experience with doing exercise. Some people, like Dennis, have done pulmonary rehab. I see some people um, that I've um, led with the North Okanagan Better Breathers Group or our programs in Vernon 
but many of you I don't know or maybe uh, newer diagnosed have had less opportunity to exercise with a physiotherapist or pulmonary rehab program. So I would like to uh, review how you sort of judge your exercise intensity. I'd like to review per slip breathing as a way to help manage your breathlessness while you exercise. Uh, some body positions uh, that you might adapt or uh, adopt if you're um, feeling short of breath uh, while we exercise. Um, a quick um, review of uh, new resources that the BC Lung um, Association is putting up on their website and some really important safety tips so we can all stay safe with this exercise at home. I normally, um, when I meet with my groups, I'm meeting with a small group of people, um, sort of between five and 20 people. Uh, I'm seeing them over, over my screen. I project them onto our giant, uh, giant TV screen. Uh, I've had the opportunity to assess them all in person beforehand um, because we don't have that opportunity here with this group. Uh, I want to make sure we cover off some really important uh, safety tips because uh, everybody's safety is of paramount importance to me. All right, uh, the World Health Organization uh, just actually released new physical activity guidelines in November of 2020. And the WHO Director General was quoted as saying, being physically active is critical for health and well-being. It can help add years to life and life to your years. And that's uh, really um, a main reason that I like to stay active and encourage people to stay active is, is to add that life to, you, to your years. We know that exercise has many benefits, um, including for people with COPD. So in, in terms of controlling shortness of breath uh, and improving quality of life. So in the context of COVID-19, how can you move safely and creatively if some of your usual um, activity programs aren't available? What are some options out there for you? Exercise, as Dennis said, has been a cornerstone um, in his own management of his COPD. And this is a uh, Canadian Thoracic Society's um, guidelines for management of COPD. Uh, so we can see that exercise comes sort of in the first stage in terms of integrated care, talking about smoking cessation, exercise, um, teaching about device technique. Uh, then we see some of the medications, um, longer acting um, inhalers being added for some people, uh, pulmonary rehabilitation, which as Dennis pointed out, includes an education and exercise component. Most of the the programs in BC are now starting to roll out virtually. Um, so being available over Zoom um, for those that, that have that access, which many, you know, today's group of people are obviously more computer savvy than some others. Um, so that may be an option uh, for many of you if you haven't been through pulmonary rehab before, it still is an option um, at the moment. Uh, only instead of face-to-face, -face, you may have a virtual education and exercise. Uh, and then, of course, uh, at the very top of the scale there, um, some people are going for lung transplantation and are doing exercises pre and post that as a part of uh, management. So here is a scale of perceived exertion. This particular uh, diagram comes to us from the Living Well with COPD website. And what I'd like you guys to consider right now is what is the intensity of your breathlessness or sort of overall fatigue today, right at this moment? So zero would be none at all, and 10 would be maximal, okay? So zero, none at all, 10 maximal. In the middle of the scale, we have two light, three moderate, four somewhat severe, five severe, Hopefully everybody is feeling uh, very little effort at this point uh, and very little breathlessness just sitting at rest. Uh, so somewhere in the you know light or less category. If it's high for you today, if you're up you know five, six, perhaps uh, starting an exercise program on top of that is not appropriate for today um, for you. But you're welcome to continue to 
um, watch and 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 learn and and have something to take away for a day where you're feeling a little bit a little bit better that you're feeling a little less short of breath. People often wonder how hard they should work uh, during exercise. So again, we want to think of that combined rating of our effort and shortness of breath, and we want to aim for an effort of three to five out of ten. So three out of ten is a moderate effort. Uh, you're still feeling comfortable. You could speak in short sentences. Five out of 10 is starting to get heavy. It's starting to feel a little bit difficult. Uh, and you can push towards five out of 10 if you're having a good day, um, if you feel in the mood to push yourself just a little bit today, you can work to that five out of 10 level. Uh, if it's five out of 10 because you haven't slept well, or you feel that you might be coming down with a cold or an infection, I'd prefer that you slow down, okay? Work at that lower end of the scale, um, the sort of three, that moderate effort, keep it a little easier. If you are experiencing a flare up um, or an exacerbation, you know, on a course of antibiotics and prednisone prescribed by your doctor for a change in your symptoms, you should definitely talk to your health professional about some specific activity recommendations. So for people that are in pulmonary rehab, we can often continue to have them exercise, but at a much lower intensity, less repetitions. Um, but if you're if you're newer to exercise and you, you don't kind of have that uh, regular activity background behind you, if you are experiencing a flare up, um, perhaps today isn't the best day to be doing exercise with us. So here's another version of that scale of perceived exertion. Uh, this one uses nice little smiley faces or frowny faces. Uh, so in the green smiley face, there's no effort at all. At the uh, red sad face, uh, it's the uh, worst breathlessness you can imagine or maximal effort. And we're wanting to work in that sort of uh, yellowy green uh, stage at the moderate effort. So that three to five out of 10 during our exercise. And I will try to remember to ask as we're doing our exercise, um, ask you to rate your own perceived exertion um, and sort of judge whether you're just right or whether you need to slow down a little bit or whether you need to work a little harder. Something that may make your exercise feel easier, may help you have a lower rating of exertion is to use per slip breathing. So this is particularly valuable for those of you that have COPD. Um, there's definitely research showing it's valuable in that population. If you have um, interstitial lung disease, uh, other conditions, asthma, uh, there's not as much evidence for it. So you're welcome to try it and see if you find it helpful. Um, but definitely for those with COPD, um, this technique is shown to be helpful. So what purse-lip breathing is, is you inhale normally. So you're still breathing in slowly through your nose. Uh, if you can get air through your nose, if you can't, it's okay to draw it in through your mouth, but ideally we're breathing in through our nose. And then we'll purse our lips, just like you're whistling or puckering your lips a little bit like you're, you're going to kiss somebody. And we'll breathe out long and slow. So not forced. This isn't the lung function test that uh, many of you have had to endure, where that's blow, 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 blow. And you feel that there isn't any more air to blow out and they're still asking you to blow a little bit more. So this is not a forced exhale. It's still a relaxed exhale but we want it to be a little bit longer than the time you spent breathing in. And what purse-lip breathing does is it creates a little bit of back pressure, keeps those damaged airways open a little bit longer so more of that carbon dioxide can get out so we can get a better, uh, better breath in the next time. If you work a little bit too hard uh, during our activity session, uh, maybe this is something people do if they have stairs at home and they go on the stairs a little bit too rushed, especially if they're carrying something that those kind of activities often make people feel a little bit more short of breath. Uh, so we are gonna be exercising in seated today, but a seated position takes less energy than standing. So we sit ourselves down, we place both feet on the ground, feel free to try this out. So you place both your feet on the ground, uh, you're gonna lean your chest forward slightly so you can rest your elbows kind of on your knees, on your thighs, okay? So you're leaning forward a little bit. 
Some people like to rest their um, chin in their hands. Other people um, just prefer to keep those elbows or hands uh, anchored on, on their legs, okay? So that is one position. Uh, the, the second photo there, photo B, uh, they have uh, access to a table uh, nearby. They've got a pillow. So they've just put their head up and they're resting, trying to catch their breath uh, with their head there on the pillow. One thing I had a gentleman tell me before, he said, if you, if you have a little bit of a belly, if you have a little bit more weight around the middle, he found it better to have his legs a little bit more open in that bent forward position because it just leaves a bit more room for your diaphragm to expand so that your belly's kind of not pushing up as much uh, onto your diaphragm. So you might find having the legs spread a little bit um, in that seated position um, comfortable as well. Okay, so I'm hoping people will pace themselves and won't need to get into uh, this position during our exercise, but uh, uh, in case you need um, some strategies, this is one of them. So general tips to reduce shortness of breath while we exercise, of course, stop exercising. So stop trying to keep up with whatever we're doing. Uh, rest in that recovery position. Use that purse lip breathing, use that purse lip exhale. Once your breath is under control, if you have a rescue inhaler, if you've been prescribed one like Ventolin, the Blue Puffer, Subutamol, um, take those, take, take your puffer. And of course, if you just cannot recover your breath and you need immediate assistance, um, please call the emergency number for your area. For most of us in BC, that would be calling 911. Okay. What other symptoms should we watch out for while we exercise? Okay, if you haven't been exercising lately, a lot of us have been stuck at home. You're maybe not even getting out to the grocery store to protect yourself. You, you haven't been getting out um, you know, for some of your regular activities. So maybe your, your activity has been a lot less than usual. Um, so we wanna watch as we're resuming activity that we're not getting any unusual symptoms. So we don't want any pain or pressure in our chest, arms, jaw, neck, or back. So any pain between your nose and belly button, front or back, can be related to your heart. That's what, uh, when I was teaching cardiac rehab, that was something uh, we were teaching people. So be mindful of any pain or pressure in that area, front or back. If you experience any intense joint pain, if you're feeling dizziness or faintness, uh, if you're having heart palpitations or irregular heartbeats, uh, if you're having extreme breathing difficulties and wheezing or headaches, uh, if you experience one or more of those symptoms, please stop your exercise immediately. And again, if symptoms persist, uh, call for help, please. All right. Uh, so the BC Lung Association uh, has been working hard to help people with lung disease stay active despite COVID. Um, they've had some different resource packages um, available. Uh, something that they're doing right now is updating their staying active resources. Uh, so you can see that under their staying active at home um, a link there. Uh, they are updating their list of pulmonary rehab programs across the province and the contact information. If that's something that you're interested in, that's usually a program by doctor's referral. Uh, so they'll have that available on their website. Um, there's definitely peer support, as Dennis mentioned, uh, some phone support uh, available, some phone support programs. Also, uh, our online Facebook group, support group. And... Um, different fundraising efforts. Uh, Dennis mentioned the Lung Transplant House um, <coughs> fundraiser, and um, there is the program that is Step Up for the One in Five or Climb the Wall. Uh, and what I would uh, encourage people to do, rather than necessarily join this challenge, so I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun for our online Facebook group maybe to put in a team in this challenge? And I started sort of the initial preamble of the session. Um, and the very first week, uh, the, the challenge it gave me was to walk eight kilometers per day. 
so about 8,000 steps. So it, it really is designed around sort of fitter people, the firefighters that would race up the Sheraton Wall Center. Um, and so I thought, oh, I'm not really sure that this would be appropriate for all people with lung disease to sort of sign up and try to track their steps or activity trackers and things like that. But what I thought might be great is on our online Facebook group is just to uh, bring a few challenges in the month of February um, for ourselves around keeping active, you know, looking at our step counts at home, um, reviewing purslip breathing on stairs, um, how to use a step up as an exercise, those types of things. So I think there's a way uh, we can participate in the challenge without necessarily um, necessarily registering uh, with the app. So look for that on the Facebook group in February. We'll have some fun, uh, fun challenges there and you can use each other as accountability partners. All right, uh, so let's say you click on some of those new exercise resources that are on the BC Lung webpage. Um, these are a few safety tips for doing these exercises at home. And uh, we, we need to remember these things for today as we're ready to exercise here in the next couple of minutes. So talk to your doctor or health professional about becoming active. Uh, hopefully everybody is wearing comfortable clothing today, something that allows easy movement. Have a look down at your feet. What have you got on there? Uh, we aren't doing standing exercise today, so it's not as critical. We will do some sit to stands, but we want to have uh, proper fitting non-slip footwear, particularly if you're doing any standing um, activity routines that might be posted on the BC Lung website. We don't want to have slidey socks on linoleum and hardwood floors and that kind of thing, anything that could put you at increased risk of a fall. Some people have been advised to take their rescue inhaler, their airway opener, their bronchodilator inhaler before exercise. Now those inhalers usually take five minutes to to start taking an effect and peak effect um, is after 15 minutes, usually around 30, the 30 minute mark and they'll last for about four hours. Uh, so if you've been told to take your inhaler before activity and you haven't taken it yet, grab that spacer and go ahead and take your inhaler. If you don't need to take it before activity, um, maybe have it nearby. It's always good to have it nearby in case you're feeling overly short of breath when you exercise. Uh, if you have oxygen prescribed for when you're doing exercise, please wear that during our exercise session. So not everybody needs supplemental oxygen for exercise, but if it has been prescribed to you, um, please use it as directed. Prepare a safe area. So look around, look around where you're sitting. Is it an uncluttered space free of tripping hazards? Again, this would be a little bit more important if it were we were doing more standing activities. Uh, are you on a sturdy chair uh, without wheels? So a lot of people at their computer might have a quite a rolly chair. We are gonna do some, some sit to stands and things like that. So is there a sturdy kitchen chair or something else that you'd like to have uh, instead of a chair with wheels? Would you maybe like to back your chair up against a wall while we do our activities? So we want a nice uh, sturdy chair for our exercise. Uh, if you are fortunate to have a helper at home, that's great. Um, if, you know, if, you're, if you have the ability to have somebody at home when you're doing exercise, um, that's very lucky. Uh, not everybody does. So if you don't, uh, please have a phone handy. Uh, whether that's your cell phone, whether that's your landline, but have a phone handy that you could call for help um, if needed, okay? Some people have medical alert, so a little button, um, maybe through Lifeline, for example, that they can press uh, if they're in trouble to activate help. Um, please have that handy. So um, my mother-in-law, uh, poor Diane, I'm throwing her under the bus here, but she she would uh, be in the living room where she had a couple of falls and her lifeline would be in the bedroom, you know, hanging off of, uh, off of the dresser. Uh, so it is important to actually wear your medical alert or, or keep, it, keep it handy uh, during the exercise. If you are uh, alone, you can consider whether you feel safe unlocking your door 
Uh, the only reason to do so would be so that emergency personnel could access you more easily if you ran into trouble while exercising. Uh, gather and inspect your equipment. So the only equipment you might use today for our exercise is if you happen to have an elastic resistance band, uh, you can have that. Just check it for any nicks or tears if you haven't used it in a while. Um, if you don't have resistance band, you could use a couple of small soup cans for resistance for weights, uh, or you can just use your body weight for today. Just sort of go through um, the exercise with us without any added resistance. During the activity, I'll reinforce using our purse of breathing. I encourage you to monitor your effort and response to activity. Um, some people might have a little pulse oximeter, a little way to check their oxygen and heart rate. Um, so if you do own one of these, it's great to have that available during exercise. Um, we would like your oxygen uh, to stay above 90% unless you've been told a different number by your physician. Okay, so it's not necessary, but it's it's a nice tool that some people have available at home to monitor their response to activity. But we can still use that rating of perceived exertion scale. Uh, maybe a little bit of water handy. Um, I've got my water bottle over there in the corner, uh, so you can have a, a drink of water as needed. So should you stop? Well, once, you know, if you're questioning, should I stop as we're going along? Um, just remember, you can adjust your effort as needed. You can do, I'm going to aim for about 10 repetitions of each exercise. Feel free to count for yourself how many repetitions you're doing, because I do sometimes lose track when I'm talking and exercising. Uh, so you can do less repetitions. You could start out with five if you haven't been exercising lately. If you've been exercising regularly, maybe you want to um, do a few more than we're doing, go up to 12. Uh, if you're familiar with exercises and you don't, uh, you can choose an alternate one to the ones we're doing if, uh, if one of them is bothering you. Uh, look to find ease through your breathing, through that purse lip breathing or your positioning. So sitting right back against your backrest of your chair will be more restful than sitting away from that backrest. Uh, you can move slower, you can take breaks. Uh, definitely stop if you notice an increase in pain, if you feel you can't do the exercise with good form or if you have a safety concern. All right, it is time to move. Uh, this is my favorite part. Uh, it's, you know, one of the best parts of my job is getting to move uh, with other people. Um, what we will do is a little bit of a warm up uh, using some range of motion. We'll do some aerobic activity. Uh, so just some continuous activity using the big muscles of our body. We'll do a few strength exercises using elastic bands and our own body weight. And then we'll do a cool down with a little bit of stretches. And then you should always have a small celebration. Uh, they're saying that even a small thing like shouting out woohoo at the end or giving yourself a pat on the back, um, that that little bit of celebration helps reinforce the exercise habit. Uh, research is showing that. So feel free to celebrate in your own uh, small way when we uh, reach the end of our exercise. And then we'll have time uh, hopefully for a few questions uh, at the end of the session. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Welcome to the Sims family basement. This is where I have been leading our group exercise sessions the past. Uh, started out upstairs in my bedroom when the kids were still home from school and employees were working from home. And then now that they're at school, I've been able to graduate to a space down here. I won't be projecting for those uh, that are here from my usual group. Uh, you are not being projected onto uh, a TV screen today. I'm not planning to be able to see um, people that are exercising. That's why I needed to go over those safety tips so much uh, more today um, because I won't be able to see your technique. Okay. I'm just gonna have a little sip of water. Feel free to have a little sip. Check that band. I'm sure you're all ready. Good. I'm just gonna make sure I look at a little 
Got a little timer here so I can keep track. Okay, so we're gonna start out with just a little bit of range of motion to warm up. So what I want you to do is point your hands up and down and let your feet do the same. Let your feet go heel toe. So heel toeing the feet and the hands going up and down. Good. We'll do some circles of our ankle. So we're just extending one leg a little bit out front. We're gonna rotate our ankle and rotate our wrists. And then switch directions on that same side. And just move in whatever your comfort range is. Relax that leg, we'll extend the other one out. Do some circles, the ankle and the wrists. You can already start to use that purse slip breathing. Switch directions. Good. Excellent. The next one we're going to try is we're going to try tapping our heel out to the front. So a little heel dig. We're just tapping our heel out front, extending our knee just a little bit. Trunk nice and tall. You can be sitting in your backrest to make that feel a little bit easier. Sitting away from our backrest to make it a little bit more of a challenge. Good, let's do the same with our arms now. We're gonna alternate, spending at the elbow. Your choice, your speed of movement. Okay, if you do a few less repetitions. Excellent, good, all right. Can we extend our leg out front and then let it down and extend the other one out front? So a nice way to warm up is either to do the exercise you're doing, but at a slower pace to start out. So for example, if you're going for a walk, you might start out at a little slower pace, or if you have a stationary bike, you'll have the resistance quite quite low, maybe start pedaling out a little bit more slowly to begin. Good, all right. Let's uh, get a little movement with our arms. So extend one arm out front and just do some nice little circles. And then we'll circle the other way. If this bothers your shoulder at all, feel free to have your arm down low rather than out front. Excellent. And then the same for the other side, some little circles. Good. Breathing in through your nose, breathing out through purse lips. Good, excellent. Okay, let's get a little movement for our trunk. So maybe cross those arms across your chest, your feet are on the floor, and we're just gonna breathe in and we're gonna exhale and turn and kind of look over our shoulder, kind of like a shoulder check for those that are still driving. So in through our nose. And just let your head follow along with your body. Just what's comfortable for your neck. Some people are quite stiff through their spine. Some people are quite bendy. So just turn what feels totally comfortable for you. Absolutely zero pain in your back. Let's go one more to the other side. Nice, okay. I'm gonna interlace uh, my fingers. 
uh, to raise my arms up or overhead. You could also put your thumb kind of into the, your web space of each hand into each other. Some people that attend my in-person class have a little bit of stiffness in one of their shoulders. Uh, so they like to hold on to a small dowel or a cane as they raise their arms up overhead. And again, just use your breath. Let's do just a few more. Breathing in and breathing out. Excellent, good. Let's roll our shoulders back. So, you know, I used to maybe make a little train with your arms when you're a kid, if you're pretending to be a train. That was backwards, now forwards. Good. All right. So we're about six minutes in. Hopefully everybody's feeling warmed up. The idea is to move around that synovial fluid in our joints, that lining, the lubricant that lines our joints to kind of get them ready for activity, uh, to bring that heart rate up gradually. Think about that perceived exertion. Zero being no effort, 10 being your all out maximum. How are you feeling so far uh, with all that movement that we just did? Okay, is it three, is it moderate, is it four, is it somewhat difficult, is it five, is it starting to feel heavy? If you need to take a little bit of a break before jumping into the cardio session with us, um, feel free to do so, okay? Depending on what your rating of exertion is. So what we're gonna start out with, I'll just look at the time. We're gonna do about a minute of each exercise. We're gonna start out with some marching. So just marching in place in your chair, your choice, how high you wanna lift those knees, whether you wanna be seated into that back rest, how much you wanna pump those arms. Something that a lot of people find makes exercise more enjoyable is having music playing. Uh, so with our some of my groups, we've created a Spotify playlist. Unfortunately, since we wanna record uh, this session today and make it available on BC Long, it cannot play any copyrighted music. And I didn't think that we'd find elevator music that motivating. But feel free if you are watching this video later on, at home uh, or doing some of the other videos that are on the BC, that I'll have links on the BC Lung webpage, feel free to play some music and see if you find it makes the exercise feel easier. All right, that's about a minute. The next one we're gonna try is a side step. So you're sitting tall in that chair, feet are touching the floor and we're just stepping to the side and back to the center. Stepping to the side and back to the center. Breathing in through our nose, breathing out through pursed lips. Get as much out of this exercise as possible. Sit your spine up nice and tall like a string is pulling you up through the top of your head. So activating that core, those back extensors rather than being slouched. Sit up as tall as your spine will allow. Hold up that trunk. We tend to sit a lot during the day and we tend to sit right against those backrests or in those recliners. We kind of leave everything in this middle part of our body kind of shut off. So if you can sit yourself up tall, sit away from that backrest, that in itself may be a little bit of a challenge. I can tell that some questions are coming in. Um, we will or comments, we'll definitely be looking at those. I They are coming in on very small print on my screen, so I won't be able to uh, read them just right at the moment. Good. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of cardio with our arms. So imagine, uh, I'm not a boxer, but you can imagine 
one of those speed bags that I've seen in a movie. We're just twirling our arms, keep going. Just keeping an eye on our timer, twirling our arms, twirling our arms. If you need the elbows a little bit lower because it bothers your shoulders to have them up here, it's okay to lower the arms a little bit. Maybe you want it harder. Maybe you want to be marching your feet while you're doing it. Okay, backwards. I don't know if they ever do that in a boxing gym, go backwards, but we'll try it. So if you are feeling a little bit too short of breath, use that purse lift exhale, relax those arms for a moment. So the arms down, lots of options. Good. All right. Let's relax our arms for a moment. The next one we're gonna try is what I call a tap dance. So what we're gonna do, and this comes from uh, strategies and activities for independent living, so the SAIL program, this exercise, and you're heel tapping to the front, stopping at the center, and tapping your foot to the side and back, and then we switch legs. Heel tap out front, tap to the side. Front, center, side, center. Front, center, side, center. So go at whatever pace you want to use. I'm just trying to move for a few minutes. And then get a little cardio in using the big, bigger muscles of our body in kind of a rhythmic way. So cardiovascular exercises tend to do that, whether it's swimming, biking, walking, more aerobics, like, like we're doing today. Nice. Good, all right. The next one I wanna try, just take a breath into your nose, out through pursed lips. If you need to sit any of these out um, while you catch your breath a little bit, if you need to skip one, no problem. Um, 10 minutes of moves, movement is maybe more than you've done lately. For those that feel they can keep going, we're gonna try a mountain climber. Oh, a modified mountain climber. So there's some people in fitness classes that do these sort of in a plank position. We're gonna do this seated in a chair. We're going to bring our knee up. We're raising our knee up and we're reaching our opposite arm towards the sky. So our legs are kind of marching as our arms reach up and then pull down. So it's a bit like climbing a ladder to me. We're breathing in through our nose. We're doing purse lift exhales, long exhales. So using just the arms or just the legs is easier than moving both. Arm activity tends to make people a little bit more short of breath, people with COPD, than the leg work. So if you ever need to relax your arms and just anchor them on your legs to catch your breath a little bit, you can. Good. Okay. We must be at the top of this mountain by now. All right. Let's try a kick, a knee extension and reaching our arm out. So I'm extending my knee and I'm reaching my opposite arm out. I've still got my trunk tall. I'm sitting away from my backrest to make it a little bit more challenging. 
Again, if that bothers your shoulders, maybe you don't hold the arms so high, or maybe you keep your hands on your legs to make the breathing easier. If you have some arthritis in your knees, maybe you don't extend the knee quite fully, just so that you're not aggravating your joint. Keep going. Excellent. Okay. All right. Okay, we're gonna go up onto tiptoes now. So toe raises and back down. Tippy toeing. Up, tighten those calves at the top. You wanted that harder, you could of course add any kind of arm movement to it. First lift exhales. Good. All right, let's march lightly. Just about done our cardio. We're just we're right around that, that 10 minute mark. So you're gonna march lightly with your feet. Give me some punches with your arms. Maybe every once in a while he throw in uppercut. Good. Excellent. Nicely done. All right. I can feel my heart rates up. I can tell that my breathing I'm, is uh, a little, I'm a little bit more short of breath than when we started. So I want you to think about your rating of perceived exertion. Where are you at? Zero, no effort. Two, light. Three, moderate. Four, somewhat difficult. Five, starting to feel heavy. We're slowing it down a little bit here as we go into our strength exercises next. But if you need to, if you're up at a five and you feel like you kind of need to catch your breath a little bit, breathe in through your nose, out through pursed lips, and feel free to skip um, the first strength exercise if you just need to have a little bit of time to catch your breath, okay? The first one we're gonna start with is a sit to stand. And this is the only time I'm gonna ask you to consider standing up during the exercise today, okay? Because I wanted to be mindful that some people may have great balance and some people um, may have less balance. So we're keeping it safer today by sticking to mostly seated activity. So a couple of options for a sit to stand. You could be pushing through armrests of your chair. You could be um, pushing off your own legs. Or if you've done this before and you know you have the balance and the strength in your legs, maybe you're gonna cross your arms across your chest. So how we prepare for a sit to stand is we have our feet about shoulder width apart, to toes facing forward, okay? We wanna make sure, I've got about two fist widths between my, between my knees. And I wanna keep that distance as I come up to standing so that my kneecaps stay lined up over about the middle of my foot or my second toe. Okay, so we don't wanna knock in as we uh, stand up. Okay, we wanna try to keep that alignment. Let's start with just a mini sit to stand to see how you feel. So let's start out with five where we only go part way up. Okay, so just a little couple of inches off your chair so you can push with your hands or not. Hopefully everybody's caught their breath a little bit after that cardio. I'm just coming up a few inches. Let's do two more. Okay. 
All right, if you've done full sit to stands before, we'll move into that. If that feels like enough work doing a partial sit to stand or you're at all worried about your balance and you have nothing around you to hold on to, continue doing that mini sit to stand, okay? So if you feel you can do the full stand up, we'll do that next. Okay, so your feet are prepared, you're ready. We'll breathe in, we'll exhale all the way up and all the way back down. Now it would be, remember, we didn't want that rolly chair because we need to make sure your chair is there as you're going to sit down. So maybe you need to reach back and make sure your chair is going to be there. Okay, so your choice. I know my chair is secure, it's up against the wall. So I feel comfortable keeping my arms crossed across my chest. I think this is number six. Or I said, count for yourself <laughs> in case I forget what number we're on. Eight, nine, Ten. Awesome. That is a very functional exercise. So most people have to get out of a car. They have to get uh, off the toilet, stand up out of bed. We need that strength in our legs. And it's nice. The sit to stand works the front of our legs and the back of our legs. Uh, so that is a great exercise if you're just going to take one away from today to kind of do later on uh, this week. A uh, sit to stand would be an awesome one to take away from today. All right, if you have a band, uh, grab that band. We're gonna do a few exercises with the band. So different companies uh, make bands. This, these ones are made by Sancta Band, the one I'm using today. Uh, there's their band, there's bands from the dollar store at Walmart. Every band company seems to have different colors for the amount of resistance provided from um, their bands. Okay, so different colors often means a different amount of resistance. I'm choosing a medium resistance today, uh, and I'm partly choosing this band because I think it's gonna stand out really well uh, for you guys to see this nice bright green against my darker clothes. So we're gonna start with a chest press. I suggest you choose your band, not for how well it shows up on a video, uh, but for uh, so that you would feel some fatigue if we're doing 10 repetitions, um, that you would feel some fatigue around number eight and just be able to complete a couple more. Uh, then you know you have kind of just the right amount of resistance. If it feels super easy throughout the whole thing, maybe you uh, could step up to a little bit more resistance. So for our chest press, we're gonna take that band around behind our back having it come out from underneath our armpits. You can wrap your band a little bit uh, around your hands to make it easier to hold on to. So I've wrapped it a little bit through that web space of my hands to make it easier to hold on to. Okay. I'm going to sit myself up nice and tall again into your backrest easier away from your backrest harder. And we're going to press away from our body and then come back. Press away and come back. So I'm starting with my palms uh, facing in towards each other. When I press out, they're facing the ground and then back. So eight is often a great place to start, sort of eight to 10 repetitions. If you need to start with a few less, that's fine. If you had small weights, because you don't have a band, you could do the same thing, uh, holding a couple of small soup cans, you could do the same thing, okay? So these were 400 milliliter cans of chickpeas. Uh, 400 milliliters weighs about 0.8 eight of a pound, uh, not including the metal, so about a pound each. Uh, so that is an option if you don't have a band is to use some little weights. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is a leg press. 
I believe we're kind of going a little over time here for the time we had allotted for the session. Uh, so hopefully that is okay with everybody. Uh, so we're going to bend our leg up and we'll press down into the band and bend it back up again. So our trunk is fairly tall. We're bending our hip and knee and we're straightening out that leg. If, if this is not a good position for you, maybe you had a hip replacement. Maybe you can't bend your hip or your knee this much because of arthritis. Another option, I'll just do a couple more here, would be, another option would be to extend the leg out front and curl underneath the best you can. Okay, that is another option instead of the leg press. Good. Okay, and then to the other side. Band is underneath. I'm just putting a little bit of tension on the band, bending my hip and knee, breathing in, out through first lips, pushing down, in, exhale and push down. So it's a good thing to think E for exhale and I think E exhale on effort. How's your hip, knee, and ankle? What's the alignment like when you push out? Is everything as straight as it could be? All in a nice line. So my goal is to do eight per side. Uh, apologies if I lose count of it as I'm talking for the video. All right, I just want to do a little time check. We're 27 minutes into this exercise. Um, let me show you one other exercise with the band and then we'll go into our cool down. Okay, so uh, one other exercise I really like is an exercise for uh, our glutes, our butt muscles. So what you're gonna do is take your band and put it underneath your legs and wrap it around. So it's just securely around your legs and you're just anchoring at, at the sides with your with your hands. Okay, so I just took that band, I tucked it underneath my legs, doubled it up over itself, and then I anchored it. Okay, and then I'm gonna sit myself up nice and tall, my feet are together, and I'm gonna drop my knees out, pushing out against that band. So I love the sit to stand for overall leg strength, leg press, it's another um, nice option if you're not able to do a lot of work in standing. Um, maybe in standing you could do um, lunges, squats, things like that. But the leg press is a nice seated alternative. I like the chest press uh, because I like to practice those muscles that need to react if we're gonna fall, if we're gonna need to catch ourselves. And I like this glute exercise because we need these small muscles to activate every time we stand on one leg when we walk. So we spend a little bit of time on one foot as the other leg swings through. And to keep your pelvis level, the standing leg needs to fire some of those, those glute muscles. And it's something I work also in extended care. And it's something that I see uh, really weak as people age if they haven't uh, continued to work on it particularly when, if you have arthritis around your hip or had hip surgery, um, we often see weak glutes. So I think that's a really important exercise to work as well. So let's finish off uh, our program here with just a couple of stretches, so a nice cool down. So I'm extending my leg out in front of me, one leg out in front. I'm gonna sit up nice and tall, and then I'm gonna bend forward at my hips, just till I feel a light pull behind that leg. 
Now, hopefully you're on, I'm on a pretty comfy, comfy chair in terms of the padding. If you're on, you know, a wooden chair or something and it feels it's digging in too much to the back of your leg, see if you can shift around to find a comfortable spot. We don't, we don't want the chair digging into the back of the leg. What we want to just feel is some, a light pulling sensation behind the leg. I'm supporting the weight of my trunk on my opposite leg. And I just want to relax into that stretch. At one time, it was no pain, no gain. Uh, we now know that uh, our muscles try to protect ourselves if we're stretching to the point of pain uh, so that we should just go to a light pulling sensation as opposed to a pain for that for the most benefit. Ideally, we would hold a stretch for quite a long, quite a long time. So for up to a minute. Um, a long passive stretch. Uh, if you don't have a full minute, you could do a few of 20 seconds or a few throughout the day. So we can add up to a minute as well as where the research is at on stretching. Switch it around, extend the other leg out front, nice and tall through your trunk, bend forward. Supporting the weight of your trunk on your opposite leg. Feeling some gentle pull behind this side. You can have a soft little bend to the knee. It doesn't need to be locked. You can think about whether you want to pull your toes up towards your nose as well. Feel it a little bit in the calf. Try not to bounce. That's another sort of stretching fad that's come and gone. Um, the bouncing. Again, our muscles are trying to figure out what length, uh, what length it's at. Um, and not really allowing that relaxation to stretch out uh, with the bouncing. Excellent, nice, good. All right, let's do a little bit of work for stretching out our arms that we worked. So take one arm and bring it across your chest. This one is sometimes confusing for people, so arm straight out front and then cross your chest and then take your other arm and gently give it a little hug in. Something to remember here is we just want to feel a light pull behind our shoulder. We don't want a pinching sensation so you can play a little bit with the angle but as much as you can relax your shoulder away from your ear. Again, if any stretch gives you pain, just stop. Good, relax that off. We'll stretch the other arm so it's in front. And I reach it across my body. And then I take my other arm and give it a little hug in. I've also seen this done in some yoga classes where they will take their hand and they will grab kind of not at their wrist but just above and they'll kind of gently give a little tug on the arm again relax your shoulder away from your ear and so you can either be just pulling in or you can add a little bit of distraction of the arm Good, relax that off. Let's roll our shoulders back just a couple times. Let's open up through our chest. So take your arms with your thumbs pointing towards the sky and just reach them back a little bit, just what's comfortable for you. What we wanna feel here is some opening through our chest, some stretch through the front of our chest or reaching our arms back. You might even add pulling your wrists back to feel some stretch to the forearms. And check out what your back is doing. So I have to check myself. I uh, wanna compensate for being tight by extending through my back, kind of pushing my chest out. So I need to tuck my ribs sometimes to make sure that I'm not cheating through my back. I like to nickname this stretch the Titanic pose. If you know anybody's seen that movie, she's on the bow of the ship at the, at the front, the waves crashing over. 
Excellent, relax that off. Little figure eights with your forearms just to shake that out. I also nicknamed this one conductor arms. I know nothing about conducting orchestra, but this is kind of what it looks like to me. I conduct perhaps more like Bugs Bunny conducting Elmer Fudd if you ever saw that episode. Excellent. All right, good. Uh, let's finish off with just a little stretch for our neck. So let's put one hand down beside our chair, a trunk really tall. Think of a string pulling you up through the top of your head. Any wrinkles in the back of your neck would be straightening right out. And then if it's pain free for you, tip away from the arm that is reaching down. If you get any pain in your neck with tipping to the side, don't tip. Just think fingers for the floor, tall through my neck. Okay, that's enough for me to start to feel a stretch. I'm just adding extra stretch with the side, tipping to the side. Excellent. Back to the center. We'll switch it around. Other hand goes down beside you. Fingertips are reaching down towards the floor, really tall through my spine, tall through the back of my neck, like a string is pulling me up. And then a gentle tip to the side if it's pain free. There are different variations on this stretch in terms of how you position your arm, whether you tuck your chin down in towards your shoulder or not, to kind of hit some different muscles that tend to be tight. With people with COPD who spend a lot of time breathing through their apically, as they call it, through the muscles at the top uh, that attach from our neck to our first rib. So these are nice stretches to do to relax those out. All right, now I said we needed to celebrate the end of our exercise session. So hopefully you feel your heart rate has come back down, that your breathing is under control. Again, if you think about rating a perceived exertion now, maybe you're down to light. Um, you know, that effort level has come back down, back towards resting. That's the idea of the cool down um, portion of the activity is to slowly bring things back down uh, to a resting, resting level. All right, so you choose how to celebrate. It could be a round of applause, could be a pat on the back, Everybody's mics are off, could be a woo, a big yahoo that you did that today. I certainly give you guys all a virtual high five, fist bump. Thank you so much for joining me for that exercise session. I hope you enjoyed it.